Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Frenemies. I am DJ Cox, joined as always by David Swore. And David, you know, sometimes I, I kind of got to reveal this. I just left my, my day job as Batman, you know, <laughs> and I had to come for the podcast today. So you caught me at a good time tonight. There's not much going on, so um, I can do the show with you tonight, buddy. So it's good to DJ, have you. Let's go ahead and tell our listeners what's really been going on the last couple of days. So me and DJ are zombies, literally. <laughs> DJ was up till 3.30 in the morning watching his daughter play softball last night, which is the craziest thing I've ever heard playing softball <laughs> that late. Uh, I coached two basketball games yesterday, and so – we're dragging butt pretty bad today, if you just want to know the truth about it. So we can't be held accountable for anything we say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we – if we Diamondbacks fans, if we say somebody that played on the team on 2001 is starting at catcher, just ignore it. Move Leave on. us alone. Yeah. And actually, DJ, I'll have to tell you, at, when researching for this show, I was looking for position battles, and I, I Googled it, you know, and I'm looking, and it took me literally five minutes to realize it was from 2015. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I was like, uh, I can't even think of the guy's name. I'm so tired. Mathis, Jeff Mathis. It was like, Jeff <laughs> Mathis is still a catcher? What? <laughs> anyway. So, but hey, <laughs> we're going to make it happen tonight. We still got it. So, us at 50% is still better than what you're going to get on Sports Center. So, <laughs> that's, that's the truth, man. I agree 100%. Forget those guys, man. Whatever. We got this show. We got you, Diamondback fans. We're going right. to we're going to provide for you guys tonight. Uh Arizona, I don't know, David, we'll get into this a little bit. I'm not, you know, they got some ups and downs for this team. Um we'll we'll get into it a lot here in the next few minutes here and talk about this team, but why don't you start us, David, with running down the 2020 Arizona Diamondbacks? So, DJ, if you'll remember, in 2019, the Diamondbacks kind of came out of nowhere, had a really good season, 85 wins, 77 losses. They made a bunch of moves uh, in, in that offseason. They got uh, Madison Bumgarner, Starlin Marte, Cole Calhoun. And so, if you'll remember, this time last year, DJ, we were looking at the Diamondbacks as a team ready to make a move. And, man, what a crazy season. So, they start out the season losing 8 of 11. Then they win 10 of 13, and then they have an epic meltdown. They lose 18 of 20 games. And so that led into a fire sale. Starlin Marte gets traded to the Marlins. Andrew Chafin gets traded. Archie Bradley goes to the Reds. So they end up with a final record of 25 and 35. Absolutely crazy. Um, second worst record in the league. Um, and a lot of that had to do with terrible pitching, DJ. Mad Bum was awful. Um, they had a 504 team ERA. Um, just a rough year, man. Just a rough year. Um, I, was, I was researching a couple things today. I mean, they, they had some guys, had some good seasons. Cole Calhoun, um, 16 home runs, man. And if I'm not mistaken, I was looking there just now. I can't remember if he won a gold glove or if he was nominated to win a gold glove. So he had a great season. I've never been a Cole Calhoun fan. You know how I am, DJ. I don't like guys that hit low average. But, man, I think he had 16 home runs, 40 RBIs. So a great season from him. And then they had a bust-out bust season from Zach Gallon in the uh, rotation. I didn't realize how awesome he was last year. Uh, 275 ERA. He was only 3-2, and two, but, you know, playing on a bad team. Uh, Merrill Kelly had a great year, three and two, two fifty nine, and then they had some bad seasons that were surprising. Uh, I was really shocked by Luke Weaver. Uh, you know, big pickup for them a couple years ago, I believe, from the Cardinals. He was one and nine with a six fifty eight. So, all that being said, I don't know what to think about the Diamondbacks last year or this year, or honestly, the year before that. They shouldn't have been there in twenty nineteen. They weren't as good as I thought they would be in twenty twenty. I don't really know what to think about them in, in, in uh, 2021 either, DJ. There's a, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, that's that's well put, man. You, you took a lot of my points there on their 2020 season recap here. They, they just did not come through with at all. I mean, when you finish in last place, obviously you had a terrible year. They ranked 29th in home runs, 22nd in on-base percentage, 22nd in ERA, and 25th in whip. 
So they were just down all across the board offensively and on the mound. And you, you mentioned some of the guys that struggle already and uh, just, just weren't there. And it was crazy. It was, you know, it was a weird season. Marte was traded midway through the season. Um, just the, one of their big pickups was already gone. Uh, Mad Bum struggled, like you mentioned as well. One of the one of the highlights was Dalton Varsho making his debut. One of their top prospects uh, did come up and play for them. Did not really have a great year. Uh, he struggled mightily, but I think he's here to stay, so to speak. Kind of like his dad, Gary Varsho, who played for the Cubs forever. Um, Gary somehow. <laughs> found a way to hang around hitting like 180 for his career <laughs> just stayed in the majors for 10 years somehow. And now his son has finally made it. And we talked about uh, Dalton last year in our prospect pick uh, about how he was going to probably make the show and he did come up and make it. So they were two and eight versus the giants last year, uh, David two and eight. And I believe the same record against the, the Dodgers. And when those two teams uh, get you like that, you're in trouble. And, you know, you expect it kind of from the Dodgers, but you don't really expect to go two and eight versus the Giants and compete in that division. And uh, with the Padres and the Dodgers in there, you better start beating up on the Giants a little bit or you're going to find yourself in a bad spot. And uh, so they really struggled mightily with the Giants, and that was one of the biggest down reasons for their downfall. And like you mentioned, uh, losing 18 out of 20 was just atrocious. I could not really? believe that happened to them. And a uh, rough season. Um, we'll see how they turn it around in the tough, National League West, David, this is an absolute top heavy NL West, I should say, like two of the best teams in baseball reside in the NL West. So, so David, why don't you go through the uh, uh, additions on the team, the 2021 uh, Diamondbacks, who did they get uh, as additions to this team? So they had to fortify that bullpen and they did that. I think some Tyler Clippard, very underrated, man. Very underrated. If you haven't looked at Tyler Clippard's stats, go back and look at him. Seriously. He, in the last like 10 years, he's had one mediocre year. He's been pretty awesome. He was pretty good for Minnesota last year too. He's going to be setting up for him. Uh, they also got Joaquin Storia, who I assume is going to be closing for him uh, next year. Again, just a solid guy. Um, and then as Drupal Cabrera, I think is a, uh, as a good pickup, kind of a utility player. We'll get into this later. I think we'll be playing some second base, possibly uh, some first and some third, um, which will allow, you know, some flexibility with where guys play. Um, then they, on a minor league deal, they pick, picked up Chris Davinsky, who again has been very good in days past. I think it's a good addition uh, to that bullpen. Um, and if I'm missing someone here, DJ, let me let me know. Those are the, Those are the four guys that I had. Yeah, you got it, man. Soria, 223 career saves, so he's done it his whole career. And I like what you said about Clifford. I'm a big fan of his as well. Uh, maybe he's not exactly the closer type. I think he can do it. You know, he doesn't have a ton of career saves. He's been mainly a setup guy in his career, and he, he's fulfilled that role really well for a lot of teams. Sneaky good. Very sneaky good. Uh, 68 career saves for him as well. He's 35 years old, so he's kind of in the twilight of his career, but um, like you said, they they mainly focused on the bullpen in the all season, and I saw a crazy fantasy stat about Cabrera. They projected him at 81 ribbies. I don't know about that, but kind of crazy. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was reading. Maybe I was reading a tw uh, 2015 one like you were the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Even in 2015, that seems like a stretch. Yeah, it does. You're so right about that, man. So I don't know what that was. Um, so. Honestly, David, if those are the guys that you're picking up in your offseason, it wasn't a very good offseason for the Diamondbacks coming off a last place yeah. finish. They did not do very much at all. That's kind of disappointing uh, for Diamondback fans, I'm sure. So did you happen to get who they lost this offseason, David? So aside from the uh, trades that they made, which sent a whole lot of guys out, again, a Starlin Marte, Archie Bradley, who's been a fixture there, Andrew Chafin, I, I forgot about Robbie Ray. I believe he was traded last year, if I'm not mistaken, in the middle of the year. Um, so they, they lost those guys. They also lost Hector Rondon, former Cub, and then Mike Leake, who opted out of the season. Um, and honestly, he probably would have really helped them last year. So those are the guys I had for subtractions, unless I missed someone, DJ. Yeah, just John Jay also was gone, Junior Herrera to the Angels. Um so, yeah, pretty much that sums it up right there. And the guys you mentioned that were traded. Marte, I don't really understand it, David. I mean, that was kind of weird for me to, for them to get rid of him so fast. Uh, he's 31 years old. He had 281 with six bombs. 
really good player. I thought that they should have kept him longer. Career 287 average. He's a really good hitter. So what do you think uh, the reason was that they just shipped him off to the Marlins and just got rid of him? Honestly, I think they saw the Dodgers ahead of him. I think they saw the Padres ahead of him and just decided it was the time to cash out now. You know, people may disagree with that move. Honestly, I kind of understand it. They're they're not really – I mean, let's let's be honest. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. The Diamondbacks aren't contenders this year. And so if you're in that mode, unfortunately, until we get a salary floor, which we need to talk about that sometime, I'm pro salary floor, DJ. There needs to be a number that they can't go under to keep teams competitive and keep fans interested. But right now we don't have one. So for competitive purposes, I think they sold the players that they thought – you know, weren't going to help him win and got some prospects out of him. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably exactly what they did. And it just it's just weird to me, like you were saying, is going into 2019, they get they get Marte, things are starting to look up and, you know, and, and they have a good season and then they just bomb out last year and they just get rid of everybody and kind of just start yeah. going back to square one, so to speak. And it's just a really, I don't know, they're kind of a team that's like in the middle, like what are they going to do kind of thing which direction are they going to go here in the future? And mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see, no no doubt, which way they headed with that. So let's talk about Tory Lovello's uh, team this year, 2021 Diamondbacks, the 2001 World Series champions. What do you got for the two, 2021 lineup? So I have – and we've got to talk about this, DJ. I have uh, Cattell Marte leading off play in second base. Last year, 287 with two homers and 17 RBIs. And, you know – I kind of laughed a little bit maybe when Kearns mentioned him as a fantasy option at second base. But, you know, his season last year wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And he does have a lot of upside. Now, what's confusing about him in this lineup is he's been projected to play some center field as well, which would obviously open up a space for his Drupal Cabrera. So um, I didn't know if you'd heard anything in regards to that, DJ, at all. I had not. But when you when you talk about that, that makes a whole lot more sense to me. Um, I would definitely put that move uh, Marte into center and put Cabrera at second. I mean, you got to have a spot for Cabrera and uh, Tim LaCostro just doesn't really do it for me right now. So, I mean, it makes more sense to get those two bats in the lineup over Tim. So I, I, I like that a lot. That's the first I'd heard of it. Uh, everything I've seen had uh, Cabrera on the bench, but it makes sense to me. I would totally do that. That was a good move on your part finding that. Well, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, that's just kind of the rumor. Um, everything else I had seen since said Cabrera was going to be a utility guy. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Cabrera's a good player. Um, we'll see how that shakes out. But David Peralta, uh, I'm seeing would bat second. Uh, he had a sneaky good year last year, DJ. You know, he's he's been a long-heralded guy. Um, he's a high-average guy, which I like. Hit 300 last year. Um, Christian Walker, you know, a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky guy. You know, two years ago, he kind of had a coming-out party. If I'm not mistaken, he was a waiver claim or maybe a career minor leaguer, but 271, seven homers, 34 RBIs last year. Um, the big disappointment from last year, DJ, was Eduardo Escobar there at third base. Now, I don't have his 2019 stats in front of me. Maybe you do. But he had a huge year in 2019, and, man, he was terrible last year. 212, four homers, 20 RBIs. So I'm sure they're uh, expecting a big bounce back from him. Uh, Nick Ahmed playing shortstop, 266 last year, five homers, 29 RBIs. Good fielder, not a great hitter. Uh, Carson Kelly, uh, caught, is the catcher, projected starter right now, 221, five homers, 19 RBIs. Um, I accidentally passed over Cole Calhoun, gold glove caliber right fielder, 226, 16 homers, 40 RBIs. And then in this iteration of the lineup, I have Tim LaCostro, 290, two homers, seven RBIs. Yeah, so it's it's a good lineup. I really do like it. Um, and you were talking about Escobar and his 2019 season. He had 35 bombs and 118 ribbies. So he had an awesome season. He also led the majors with 10 triples. And he had a 269 wow. batting average with a 320 on base. So he raked in 2019. You're exactly right about him uh, coming down a little bit in 2020, man. And it, it seems like a lot of guys did that. The more we go over these teams, the more that you see that 2020 was just a big struggle for a lot of a lot of individuals for a lot of different reasons, man. And yeah, I can yeah. imagine a 60 game sprint got to be hard sometimes with all the things they were going through. And I think it hit him pretty hard, uh, no doubt, but man, what a performance in 19. And he's got a lot of potential, like you said, to be one of the dogs on this team. This is a good mm -hmm. offensive team. They've got some guys, man. And I'm really, 
I was really high on their offense last year and I'm really high on it again. You know, I really do like their offense. I think it's, I think it's exceptional. And I think when you put Cabrera in the mix uh, over the Castro, I think that's even better. Um, you know, yeah. I was kind of looking at the end of that, uh, the end of that lineup there. And um, there's a few guys with batting average that really struggled last year with uh, Kelly as well at 221. So, um, but yeah, I really do. I think it's solid. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of potential for them to score a lot of runs this year. So what about the pitching? Man, DJ, I hate to say it, but I like their pitching. Um, I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot to like in there. They had some guys that we, as we talked about, had down years last year. So, you know, it goes back to if the Diamondbacks can get some bounce back from these guys, I don't see them passing either the Dodgers or the Padres. But I just think they could be a real pain in the butt, you know, in that league. But uh, Zach Gallon, you know, he had an ace caliber year last year, three and two, two seventy five. Mad Bum had a bad year last year, but we know what he's capable of. Uh, 640 ADRA last year. Caleb Smith, that's a sneaky one. Uh, he's been pretty good for the Marlins. He didn't get a pitch much last year, had, but he had 257 ERA in short time. And then I've always liked Luke Weaver. I have no idea what happened to him last year. Again, one and nine and 658. And then they got Merrill Kelly, who had a good year last year, three and two, 259. So I actually like their rotation, probably better than a lot of people. I, like I said, I still think this team could be pretty sneaky. Wow, yeah. I mean, um, it, it's kind of to be determined with Caleb Smith. You know, he's going to get a full year here to prove what he is. I got, I see him as the three starter, and a lot of these, uh, a lot of these projections, I'm seeing him and Luke Weaver led the league in losses last year, which blows my mind because I've always thought, like you said, he was a good pitcher, and maybe you just punt on some of these guys in their 2020 stats and just know that was a crazy year. And, um, I don't know, man. I think it's I think it's pretty solid. Uh, it's not the greatest, and a lot of that depends on what Bumgarner is going to do. If he if he's going to step up and be a true ace like he is, then they're going to be in a way better position than they were last year. So, right. Yeah, I agree with you, DJ. And you know, back to your point on on spring on the uh, short season and everything. You know, I was uh, reading an article this week about Glaber Torres. You know, obviously he had a down year, and I guess I didn't really fully comprehend that you know a lot of these guys when the shutdown happened they didn't have a place to train and so they were talking about how Glaber came out of shape and um, you know that could be the case with somebody like Eduardo Escobar I don't know how you go from hitting 35 homers to hitting five um, but that would that would explain it you know maybe they just weren't ready to play and uh, again if they can put back together some of this 2019 uh, averages and uh, and pitching you know they could they could be a good team because I, I do like your bullpen a little better uh, than the year before. And so, you know, we'll see. Yes, we will. So what do you got for team strengths on these guys? I'm going to go with their lineup. I'm, I'm like you, DJ. I like their lineup. Um, I mean, it's got a lot of potential. I'll say that. And they got some depth now, too. You know, they got Dalton Varsho um, that that looks to be, uh, you know, a good player. Didn't have a good year last year, as you mentioned, but one of their top prospects as Drupal Cabrera was a great addition. Uh, so they got some depth. They got some flexibility. They got, got some guys can play multiple positions. Um, so I'm going to go with their lineup. Yeah, I love the lineup, David. I really do. I'm not in love with it, but I love it. Okay, so, you know, it's kind of like when the girl tells you, hey, you know, just want to be your friend. I love you, but just not in that way. So I'm kind of feeling that <laughs> same kind of thing towards the Diamondbacks lineup, you know. It, it just uh, – it's, it's a really good lineup. I'm not – you know, they got a lot of dudes in it, Calhoun, Marte. I like Walker, Peralta, Escobar, Ahmed. I mean, it's yeah. really good. A lot of questions as to whether they'll be consistent or not, but, I mean, it's it's really solid, no doubt. And David, I got to ask you this real quick. So, who would win in a fight, you or Cole Calhoun? What do you think? Uh, I definitely could take Cole Calhoun. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could see you taking him out, man, no doubt. I, he's not big at all or scary, you know. He just no. – you could probably flick him and he'd – fly across the ring or whatever so i get it man hey i have a built-in hatred too. for cole calhoun <laughs> anyway he's one of these guys he's real streaky right so i'm the guy that always picks him up when he sucks <laughs> so last year i was like i'm not picking him up screw him and what's he did 16 homers in 60 games so i can't win with cole calhoun anyway <laughs> i'll tell you what man he's great defensively too yep. he's got a a weird throwing motion because he's got such big arms and everything. So he goes like completely over the top and just hoses, man. And he dives like crazy everywhere in right field. And 
he's a very good defender too. And uh, when the Angels let him go, I was kind of I was kind of upset about that. I I thought that he was a big piece of the puzzle that they had moving forward. And they, yeah. they you know it's one of the sneaky moves the Diamondbacks made, you know, a couple of years ago to bring in another stud. And man, these guys just offensively, I I like it a lot. I really do. And so I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what their offense can do if that pitching staff can can bring it together the Diamondbacks can be uh can be a little sneaky here so what do you got for weaknesses David well I know just a minute ago I said I'd I like their bullpen and I do I don't like the depth that's in their bullpen so that's Point, what I'm yeah. going to go with they just don't have enough guys they've got some interesting guys but I just don't think they have enough guys so I'm going to go with their bullpen I'm going to go with their pitching I think there's a lot to prove I don't hate it Okay, but Bumgarner is on the downside. If he is, they're in trouble, and it's possible, man. I, I think he's 32 or 34, I'm not mistaken. He's somewhere in that range of uh, for his age, and it feels like he's 40 almost with the amount of miles that are on his arm. And sure. uh, We had talked to Preston a lot about mileage on the arms, and he kind of had a different perspective about it, and I get it, you know, and, and maybe he just isn't finding it right now. You know, he's had a lot of critics come after him for being like, I think, I guess he's a big rodeo guy from what I hear. And so he gets in trouble going to the rodeo and, and gets hurt sometimes when he does that kind of stuff. And, um, but man, if he can find it, you know, I, I will never ever. And he's a giant. So I, I absolutely hate the giants, but Madison Bumgarner and Buster Posey, like the amount of respect that I have for those two guys in particular is off the charts, man. Cause what How Bumgarner did in the 2014 world series where he just took the ball and, pitched almost every single game of that world series that's what you want man and some of these little prima donna sissy boys out there who just get the ball and you know oh god no i'm not pitching anymore even in the playoffs some of those guys are like that and, yeah. and i got so much respect for what he did to win those three titles and he gave everything he had he literally pitched every day on no rest um he's he's a true hall of famer he's a hall of famer already really to be honest with you and um so i don't know man he's if he if he can come back and turn this thing around, they've got a really good shot of um of being in this thing a little bit longer than they expect. Yep. What's up with the hatred for the Giants? I did how did I not know this? What's up with what? Your hatred for the Giants. How how did I not know this? Oh well, you know, it's like the Dodgers big rival, you know. It, you can't be you can't love the Dodgers and, and hate you gotta hate the Giants. Isn't that a thing? You know, it's like the Cubs Cardinals and Dodgers Giants, man, that you know, that can't happen. I hate the Giants, and you know my, you know how much I love Gabe Kapler too. We'll talk about that next at next episode, obviously. So Gabe Kapler and the combination of the Giants, not a fan, brother. By the way, the guy you just said was a surefire Hall of Famer. I'm gonna give you a pass for this because we're so tired. <laughs> he has 120 wins and 96 losses. So <laughs> we all make dumb statements. DJ just made one. Madison Bumgarner is a Hall of Famer, David. No, 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 no. I love Madison Bumgarner. I David, really do. Why, why are you researching there? Why don't you go ahead and look up the amount of wins Clayton Kershaw has right now and let our fans know this. Listen. Let me. No, 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 no. Do Clayton Kershaw's wins real quick. Madison Bumgarner has had six double-digit win seasons. Six, DJ. How many does Clayton Kershaw have for Call me John. <laughs> Won 288 games and can't get in the Hall of Fame. Madison Bumgarner's not getting there, buddy. Hate to tell you. But just for funsies, let's look up Caden Kershaw. I'm going to say it's 175. Let's see what he's got. What's your guess? Oh, he's, he's, in me, DJ. he's in the 170, 175 with a 243 career ERA. Just go yeah. away, DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? It's funny, though, because I hear people say that Clayton Kershaw has only got 175 career wins, so he can't be a Hall of Famer. What? Yeah. Listen, yeah. wins wins is a it's a Hall of Fame statistic, but it's not the only Hall of Fame statistic. And if if you're a living, breathing human being and say that Clayton Kershaw should not be in the Hall of Fame, then you need to watch figure skating. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you do not know what baseball is. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that pitching. We'll see, you know, Zach Gallon was good at the top, but then it becomes a lot of question marks after that, you know, Weaver's got to bounce back. Yeah. Um, so they're definitely my weakness as far that's as the, key to the whole thing. And I didn't look up Weaver's 2019, but 
that can't be who Luke Weaver is. What happened last year cannot be who Luke Weaver is. So I, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to look that up as we go here. But um, if I'm not mistaken, Luke Weaver had a good 2019. I tend to believe that's who he is. Um, let's see, 2019, four and three, 294. So pretty good. To tell. I don't know if he was injured in 2019 or what. He didn't have a lot of starts, but. Uh, the year before that, 7 11, 495. The year before that, 388, 7 and 2. So he's kind of been up and down. If they get the up, upside version of Luke Weaver, they're going to be all right. Yeah, it seems like he does a little roller coaster there every season. He's up, down, up, down. So, yeah, yeah they need that, man. They really do. They need the good pitching this year. So, what do you got for prospects for this team? It'd be interesting to see what you got, David. Let's bring it. <laughs> BJ, I'm super pumped because I get to, you always get to mention these guys from, from Chicago. And since there's more people within like a half mile of your house than in my entire state, I don't, I don't ever get to break it, bring up anybody. But I do today, DJ. And he's not going to help the Diamondbacks this year, but I don't care. This is my show, my part of the show, and I get to say what I want. <laughs> so two years ago, we had a boy from Nitro, which is close to me here, get drafted by the Diamondbacks. Now, he left He left West Virginia to go to the IMG Academy, His, I believe his junior year. So – but I'm still claiming him. He was the the uh, drafted in the eighth round of the 2018 draft. He's their number nine prospect. His name is Levi Kelly, six foot four, 205 pounds. Throws in the mid 90s plus slider. Um, the plan right now is to keep him as a starter. But he listen. People were talking about him around here when he was like in the sixth and seventh grade. I'm not exaggerating. It was he was a big deal. My manager, who was a, a huge baseball fan. I guess his son played about the same time as him, and he said, listen, I don't know what an MLB prospect looks like, but this guy is one. And I'm thinking he was a catcher at one point as well. Uh, so total stud. I hope he makes it. He's the second West Virginia guy to, to uh, be a top prospect for the Diamondbacks, and the other guy's name is slipping me now, but he ended up quitting. He was a, like a first-round draft pick, and he quit after a year. So oh, I don't know what's geez. up with that. Anthony Whittington was his name. But anyway, wow. uh, he just gave it up and just got over it and, and quit. So, anyway, watch out for Levi Kelly. He's probably a couple years away, but that's my prospect to talk about today. It's great to have a West Virginia guy coming up in this prospect talk, man, because you, Not know, very I, often. you know where I'm going with my prospect talk, of course, right? You know where I'm going. Local, of course, because there's yeah. so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the guy I got – uh, by the way, the Diamondbacks are number 10 as a team. So they got a pretty good farm system, David, overall. Yeah. And I, they've been in the top 10 now for a few years. And so, uh, you know, with guys like Christian Robinson and uh, Geraldo per Perdoma as well, they're also in the top 100. And my guy I'm going to go with is a local guy here in Chicago, Alec Thomas. Okay. Um, this guy uh, played for Mount Carmel High School on the south side, which we played against them. Uh, in 2017 or 16, I can't remember the exact year, and we played against Alec. Uh, he's a Diamondbacks number two overall prospect. Uh, he's the, also the Gatorade Player of the Year that year in the state, so he's a stud. Um, the 2022 ETA, he's got a possibility of coming up next year. He's 5'11", 175 center fielder, so he's not imposing physically, um, but he is a stud, obviously. You get the chance to see him firsthand like that. Uh, you get to watch him play like I did, and, you know, he's obviously very tough to coach against. He's got a lot of speed. Uh, bats left, throws left. He um, He's good at aiming the ball. He doesn't really have a huge arm by any means, but I was impressed with his ability as a hitter. He's a good hitter. He's got great speed. He can go get it in center field. He's a really good guy as far as going and getting in the gaps. Power is yet to be determined. He's not really there yet. But he's very, very talented and has little chance of not making it to the show. They're already saying he's coming up pretty quick. He's on the pipeline to – he's on that train coming up real fast. His father is a White Sox director of strength and conditioning, so he's been around baseball his whole life. So the Diamondbacks took him second um, in the second round of the 2018 draft. Uh, he hit 333 across two levels of rookie ball, so he hit the ball really well there. Uh, and he also played locally at King County Cougars, which is – uh, minor league field just up the road here too so he's been around the Chicago area a ton playing ball and we all know about him and he actually beat my guy out for Gatorade player of the year and I don't think he should have of course because I'm biased but um, yeah but Alec Thomas no doubt he's a stud and he's coming up pretty cool you know pretty cool to see the local guys 
Uh, we got a West Virginia in the guy in there tonight. I'm pumped about that too. So that's right. Yeah. That's when we can do this. You can get the <laughs> local kids some love here, man. It's good stuff. So, David, I'm interested. What your favorite memory is of the Diamondbacks? DJ, I brought this up last year, but I just got to say it again. The greatest World Series played in my lifetime was 2001. Uh, fresh off the World Trade Series, World Trade Series, World Trade Center uh, attacks. The Yankees played the Diamondbacks in the World Series. They went down 0-2 in game four and five. They were down to their last inning and had clutch home runs, one of them by my boy Tino Martinez, which was unforgettable. Um, and they went to game seven. Mariano Rivera has the ball, which is usually 90 night. And Luis Gonzalez fisted a uh, broken bat single up the middle to win the game. I remember being on the second floor of Phillips Storm. <laughs> And while I was crushed, I also literally sat down and said, I just watched the greatest World Series I've ever seen. And I still believe that to this day. Kurt Schilling, Randy Johnson, uh, you know, uh, had some great games. They were co-MVPs of that series. There was just a lot that you could say there. But that's my favorite memory of the Diamondbacks. Um, just amazing, amazing World Series. That's the, that's the World Series where George Bush threw the uh, – uh, Throughout the first pitch in game three, through the strike, uh, just an amazing moment as an American, whether you're Republican or Democrat, you had to have been proud and uh, excited to see that. So that's my favorite Diamondbacks memory. How about you? Well, before I get into mine, and you brought up Tino Martinez, David, and we're big and practical Jokers fans on this show. So yes. the other day, I actually saw the end of season seven, Tino Martinez make an appearance signing. <laughs> baseballs for people and Q had to take the pictures and ruin them <laughs> I was dying I would have like, decked I gotta this you, by the way yeah I would have if that would have been my little boy's picture and he creased it he'd have been laying on the ground I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious man I do not know how these guys do not get punched or anything like that like more than they this is some of the stuff they do, but it was so funny seeing Martinez. And I thought immediately of you, I'm like, oh my gosh, David, I guarantee you, David has seen this before. And uh, it's so funny, man. But yeah, hey, that's, that's a great memory. Real quick, for all you Impractical Jokers, if you haven't watched Impractical Jokers, you got to do it. My favorite moment of Impractical Jokers is when Murr has to uh, do squats in front of Winnie Cooper. So. That still cracks me. Every time I watch it, it cracks me up. I had a huge crush on Wendy Cooper back in the day. And she held, she holds it together until the end. Have you seen that episode, DJ? Oh, yes. That is amazing. He's all greased <laughs> up and everything. And he thinks he's going to walk out on the stage of a uh, weightlifting or a uh, bodybuilding competition. And he opens the door. And there stands his crush, Wendy Cooper. And it is, <laughs> it is so awesome. It's, if I could do something like that to you, DJ, I would pay money to do it, honestly. It would just be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's one of the best moments on that show. And she pops in here and there, too, to get him every once in a while just because he's completely embarrassed by the fact that he had to do that in front of his all-time crush. So that's absolutely <laughs> awesome, man. Such a great show. Yeah, the 2001 Diamondbacks, I'm specifically going Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling here, though. What those two guys did in this series just blows my mind. Took the ball. We talked about Bumgarner doing this in the uh, 2014 World Series. What these guys did in the 2001 World Series was just absolutely unbelievable Yeah. Um, to, to win the title. And I, they said, I don't care if my arm falls off, we're going to win this title. That's the type of pitchers you want. They're not sissies. Schilling was 4-0 and in the whole 2001 playoffs. With 48 innings pitched, 56 Ks, and a 112 ERA, Johnson was five and one in 41 innings with a 152 ERA, 47 Ks. They showed what it was, what it would take to deliver and do whatever it, it takes to win a title. Co MVPs. Still can't believe Schilling's not in the Hall of Fame. That's what I was going to say. Today. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as I should hate Kurt Schilling for dashing my my dreams twice. I mean, come on, man. This goes back to how do you tell the story of baseball in the 2000s without Kurt Schilling? You can't do it. You cannot do it. And the fact that politics is keeping him out of the Hall of Fame is ridiculous. I think the sports writers should be gone and let players vote on this thing, and we'll all be a lot happier. It's, it's amazing to me that sports writers get that, get that honor. So, anyway, that's my, that's my Hall of Fame slam of the week. Uh, I hate Kurt Schilling, but he should 100% be in the Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, I mean, we're doing the Diamondbacks podcast tonight, so this is definitely a topic we should have brought up today. A former Diamondback should have been in the Hall of Fame this year. He's got one more shot. I don't see it happening for him. I think that the numbers would have been worse for him had he, you know, had it been a week or two voting, uh, vote, voted for a week or two later than it was. The numbers would have gone down, they said. So he doesn't have much shot, which is an absolute shame. And, you know, we were talking about Ty Cobb being a murderer, and that guy's a shoe in at the Hall of Fame. But somebody who doesn't see eye to eye politically with somebody and they leave him out of the Hall of Fame, just an absolute mm-hmm. joke. I don't care if he's Democrat, Republican, anything like that. I don't care. I personally don't care what he feels about anything political. Yeah, it has yeah. nothing to do with Hall of Fame. Uh, it's an absolute joke. And uh, Kurt Schilling, for what he did in the playoffs, mainly in the playoffs, if, if, if Kurt Schilling didn't have the playoff resume that he had, he would be borderline, I believe. But when you take his overall numbers and you add to the fact of his playoff, uh, hit the way he pitched there, you, you have to. I mean, you just yeah, can't yeah. leave him off based off of his playoff performance. He's dominant uh, to go with a really great regular season career. It's a joke, um, but that 2001 Diamondbacks team was was absolutely awesome, and, and it made me even more happy that they beat the Yankees in the World Series, so I could just shove it to you a little bit there, buddy. But <laughs> I think Mark Grace was the first baseman on that team, if I'm not mistaken, DJ. He was, man, and that's another great point. It was great to see him win a World Series title and get a ring after all those years with the Cubs not getting one, obviously. And uh, he had so, he had a huge home run in that series. He really did. He was a big part, big player in that series. And um, yeah. Gracie, one of my favorite players of all time, getting to see him win a ring was was very special indeed, no doubt. That's a good that's a good point there. So, David, what about uh, Chase Field? You ever been there? I have. Uh, I sat. DJ, right about where's my camera? Right, well, you can't. I can't do it because of the background. But anyway, me and Allison were able to go there two years ago in 2019 when they were making that big run. And the funny thing was, it just so worked out. I was on a work trip that they played the Yankees. How crazy is that? <laughs> so uh, I got to go out there. I actually, like like you like to do, DJ. I got. I was. I was one of the first people in the ballpark. Me and Allison were. I got to watch Clint Frazier take fly balls in left field, which was hilarious. It looked like Leland was out there taking them. Uh, and what's funny is, is Clint Frazier turned himself into a gold glove caliber outfielder in two years. That's amazing to me because I'm telling you, it was rough. And funny story about that. So there was like, it felt like there was like 20 people in that big stadium while he was taking those, those uh, fly balls out there. And one of them must've been his mommy. I'm not really sure. There, a lady, there was a lady I don't know if something was wrong with her, but it was hilarious. Every time he would catch one, she would just go berserk. And I'm not talking about – I'm talking about he was taking fly balls for 30 or 40 minutes probably, and every time in that time span, it would be like, yeah! I mean, you could hear her going crazy. It was – anyway. But long story short, DJ, Chase Field is awesome. I love Chase Field. Obviously, the weather in Phoenix – is amazing most of the year, but it's got a retractable roof on it and it's air conditioned when it's really hot. That was a day game that I went to. And so it was really cool that the air conditioning was on. Um, I loved everything about it. I didn't get a, there's a, in right field, there was a pool. And uh, for whatever reason, I didn't even go out there and look at it. I don't really know why. I've always thought that was kind of cool that that was there, but uh, we didn't go see it. But I had a great time at Chase Field. I thought it was awesome. I loved when the Dodgers clinched the title. I think it was, Two years ago there, they clinched the NL West, and they all jumped the fence and went into that pool and celebrated in that pool <laughs> in the Diamondbacks field. I thought that was such a such an awesome thing, and I'm pretty sure that the Diamondbacks were very upset about that, obviously. And, um, yeah. there, there's a lot of talk about that, how, how upset they were with the Dodgers for doing that in their home field and celebrating in that pool. Um, but, yeah, that's a really cool feature, too, and I have been to Chase twice, and the wow. first time me and Nicole were there, we went by ourselves and uh, – we sat right by that pool. It was really cool. It's kind of a kind of a unique thing to have a swimming pool just sitting in the middle of a baseball field and people watching there. I'm sure that would be a lot of fun to actually be in the pool and just kind of hang out. No doubt. That'd, that'd be really cool. Definitely a unique thing. I, I like it. Some people are, are really critical of that. I read some stuff when I was reading up on Chase Field today, some critics about you know, how they have a pool in the, and I'm like, just shut up, you know, it's, it's a fun yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's fun. The only thing I couldn't go to the pool DJ because people would be distracted by these guns. So I just wouldn't work out. I had to keep my shirt on. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, when the flex cam came on at Chase, I was like, yep, here we go. I'm going to, they're going to focus on me the entire time. So, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I've been there twice. Um, the field opened when the franchise came in uh, since 1998. Um, it's got good food. I like the food too, as well. Like I said, big retractable roof. <laughs> If you sit out there in a day game, it's going to be 120. So I can't imagine those players having to play in that. So they definitely close it up during the day. Uh, it's ridiculously hot there. Um, fun place to watch a game. I love everything about Arizona and Chase Field. It's one of my favorites. It really is. But it's hot. Uh, it's not a dump like the Nationals field. Um, Lindsay got Paul Goldschmidt's autograph when we went the second time. Of course she did. Paul Goldschmidt. Lindsay's clutch, man. He's clutch. Lindsay's clutch. Unbelievable. He like, might be a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. He, he's Seriously. on track. He really is. He's on track. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, parking is really cheap, too, if you remember that. It was, like, right up to the field. You can get really close. I think we paid, like, 10 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, just to park. And I'm not used to that, man, because I pay, like, 70 sometimes at the Cubs. I said 70, yes. That's seven insane. Zero. 70 to pay at Cubs Field, which is ridiculous. Wrigley Field, of course um tickets are reasonable too and you can spend a little money and have a great time so i really loved it man i thought it was awesome i'm with you i i really you know anytime i'm out there i try to catch a game and we we tend to go out there a lot nicole was born out there in phoenix and she loves it out there so try to get out there as much as we can and it's a great time every time so what do you got for position battles david uh catcher is the most interesting position battle to me carson kelly you know at one point was a a big prospect, he came over, I believe, in the same trade from the Cardinals that Luke Weaver came in. Um, but but their top prospect, or one of their top prospects anyway, Dalton Varsho, is banging on the door. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. You know, are they going to give Carson Kelly a little more time to kind of get it turned back around, or is this going to be Dar Dalton Varsho's team going forward? What do you have? Yeah, center field is a little tricky for me, the Castro. Varsho. Varsho is multiple. He can play catcher, center field. He can do both. So I'm not really sure what they're going to do there. I like what you were talking about with, with Marte out there too. And, um, you know, it's just very interesting to me what they're going to do out in center field. If they throw Marte out there, it's a no brainer. Cabrera's at second. And then you don't have this, so to speak. But if they go to Castro, he's got to have somebody looking behind him. You know, it could be Varsho. Could be, Mar could be Marte. It could be they wait to make that move and then you know, sneak somebody else in, but uh, LaCastro's three and home runs, 24 ribbies and 256 for his career. So he's not proven, uh, you know, and Varsho, like I said, he had three bombs, nine ribbies last year, 188 in his career. So he struggled last year. So I think it'll be interesting to see who's starting to run the ground out there in center with uh, Marte gone now. So we'll see what happens there. So David, you got any trivia for me, buddy? Here's your big old softball DJ. Like I said, he can't hit baseballs anymore. So when you get old, you play softball. <laughs> we talked about the 2001 World Series. We talked about the two Yankees uh, home runs in late innings. Who were those home runs hit off of? Ooh, Young Young Kim? That's correct. Yep. Yes. I knew I should have made, made it a little more difficult for you, but <laughs> I was really reminiscing, man. I went, I was, I went back and wikipedia uh, that World Series, just trying to make make sure I remembered all the details. And anyway, I just thought that was that was a cool deal. Beyond, uh, I can't. I'm not even going to attempt to say his name. I'm going to butcher it. So that pitcher that you just mentioned, he looked so shell shocked that second game. I yeah. knew that home run was coming. I knew it was coming. You could see it in his eyes. He did not want to be on that mound. And uh, sure enough, it came. So uh, that's that's where I, I was. That was my trivia question. It was pretty easy. But we're tired, so. Okay. <laughs> young, young Kim, man. Uh, uh, it's funny you brought that up because when that game, that series was going on, and you could start to tell this was going to happen, but because he was so shocked and just he was their closer, obviously, and getting ripped up, and you could tell when the when the later games were coming, it was just going to be it was just going to be Schilling and, and Johnson, like yeah. that was it. Like if you can, <laughs> here, you two go, like you figure yeah. out what combination of innings to end this thing, but you're, it's you two. That's it. Like no more Young, Young Kim. Like. This Bob Brindley was very smart, very yeah. smart. By the way, I like Bob Brindley, the announcer. I'm just going to throw that out there. Hey, oh, cool. absolutely. Bob Brindley, the announcer, is fantastic. He did the yep. Cubs for many years, Diamondbacks, great. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he was under Len Casper there for a while, who went to the south side to be the radio guy. <laughs> Whatever. That's <laughs> Gambi now, baby. I don't care what he did, so whatever. <laughs> All right, so I got one for you here, David. And this is the top five career wins in a Diamondbacks uniform. What do you got? Top five. Hmm. I feel like there's going to be some names here that I'm going to later be like, oh, that was obvious that I've forgotten that they pitched for the Diamondbacks. I'm going to say Randy Johnson's on that list. Number one. So that tells me probably Kurt Schilling is too. Number three. Somewhere. I'm trying to think of that guy's name. He was there forever, and I believe he was left-handed. You got uh, it. What is it? Yeah, you're right. There's a lefty on there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of his name. He was there forever, and I think he st- he went to another West Coast team after they were done, after he was kind of done with the Diamondbacks. I just can't think of his name. Well, as soon as you say it, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just I – yes, you are. I just cannot think of his name. Give me a hint, DJ. Give me some initials or something. So the guy that is fourth on this list, the lefty, is now on the Nationals. Lefty, oh Patrick Corbin. Yes, sir. He's number four on your Diamondbacks all-time wins list. All right, give me some more hints. I'll get the other two. Number two guy kind of has like the. I'm I'm a little scruffy everywhere else today, but I normally just wear this, and that's what the number two guy wears. He was with the Diamondbacks forever. Go just a goatee. Um. He played anywhere else. B.W. No, not really. He was no totally. That's the guy I was thinking of. He wasn't left-handed. That's the guy. That's exactly who I'm. Who I was thinking of that I I couldn't I couldn't get his name a minute ago. B.W. It's too late. Just give him to me. (laughs) Brandon Webb. Brandon Webb, the killer sneaker. Hey, Hall of Fat show goes to show you what an arm injury will do to somebody. He went from Hall of Fame. Oh, I didn't say Hall of Fame. He went to Ace. For sure, ace. But did he win a Cy Young, DJ? I can't remember. Yep. Yeah, to nobody in like two years. And so I hated that. Brandon Webb is a Kentucky guy, um, and I always really liked him. And he, he wasn't a power guy, really. He was a sinker baller, and I always respected that about him. You know those guys can pitch. And really, you know, Chen Ming Wong, kind of the same thing happened to him. He went from 19-game winner to out of baseball, well, practically out of baseball in a few years, over one injury. So that just goes to show you a pitcher's – uh, you know, shelf life can be short, and it's really sad because Brandon Webb was the man. The number five guy currently pitches for the Astros as a starter. It's a Granky, I should have got that. Yep. Yeah, those I are should. your five. Those are your five. Um, you know, it's it's kind of easier to do the teams when they just started in our lifetime, obviously. It makes it a little easier for us to kind of roll through and get um, – Get there, but if you, I'll just real quickly because it doesn't matter. But just to round out the top ten on this, Ian Kennedy, Robbie Ray, who we can't decide who's Robbie Ray. What is that guy? <laughs> I don't get it. Brian Anderson, Miguel Batista, who was on that 2001 team as well. Yeah, and Miley round out the top ten. So, well, the Diamondbacks have had some good players, man. I, I mean, a lot of respect to them for staying competitive. I mean, we named. Uh, obviously, Randy Johnson's a Hall of Famer. I remember when they had on that same team Matt Williams. You know, he was a great player, uh, very underrated, a good manager too for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so they've, you know, they've had some good players on, over at the Diamondbacks. No doubt about it. So, David, as we wrap up the show here tonight, what do you got <clears throat> for a predicted finish for the Diamondbacks this year? What are you going to see out of the Diamondbacks? So this is really tough because they're very similar to the team we're going to talk about next, which is the Giants. I'm going to put the Diamondbacks ahead of the Giants. I'm going to put them in third place, not even close to the two teams ahead of them. Um, But I'm going to put them ahead of the Giants slightly. Like I said, they're very similar, but I I like the Diamondbacks lineup better. Um, And I don't hate their pitching. So that's, that's where I'm going. How about you? So for the first time in 2021, we disagree on a standings position because so far we've been rolling along. We've uh, we've been staying saying the same thing so far, but it's been pretty easy since we've done pretty much the worst team so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going fourth here. I really am. Uh, I see the Giants sneaking a little bit ahead of them. Um, I just like them just a little bit more. 
The Rockies, holy cow. We'll talk about them later, but oof. Yeah. I don't see nothing out of them this year. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go off of off of you a little bit here and um gonna go fourth here in the NL West. I just don't don't know. I'm not sure if that if that rotation ends up being good though, they could easily jump the Giants. I really believe that because I like the lineup better than the Giants lineup. Um, but we'll see. It'll be interesting, no doubt. It's gonna be a tough year. You know, if you're third place in the NL West, you're not making the playoffs because they're only, they're back to the, just the six teams in the playoffs. So you're pretty much by default not making the playoffs if you're third, fourth, or fifth in this division. Those teams are not making the playoffs. The Padres and the Dodgers, and we'll go over when we get to those podcasts, and I'll be interested to hear who you think is one and two in that division and how you think it's all going to pan out in the playoffs and everything. And um, But, yeah, you have no shot in the NL West for maybe the next five years the way these two teams have loaded up. So. It's tough to be a Diamondbacks, Rockies, uh, especially a Rockies fan. Diamondbacks, Rockies, and uh, Giants fan, no doubt. Uh, yeah. so it's going to be rough for a, a long time for these three franchises with these two teams in there. So, yep, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm going to be right. You know, I'll, of course, it's going to fall, like I say, and Dave's going to be wrong. But that's the first time we've gone off the, off the show together, so. My response to that is this is the quick response because we're going to talk about it more, and we got we got to do this tonight or – I don't know when we'll get to do it, but I don't know why the Giants rotation would make you feel any better when Anthony DeSclafani is their number three starter. I'm just going to throw that out there, and Scott Casimir might be their number five. So that's my problem with the Giants. That's, that's all I'm going to say. That's a good problem to have with the Giants, too. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, the Giants did it last year, and the Diamondbacks didn't. So I, I could have went either way. I just chose the Diamondbacks because – I think they have a little bit better upside, but I I'm with want, it. Could go I either. want the Diamondbacks to be third. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't see it. So we'll see. So, David, yeah. no, we do not have any former teammates that are Diamondbacks fans. I do not honestly know anybody who's a Diamondbacks fan. Do you got any shout outs to make for any Diamondbacks fans you know or anything? I do not know one Diamondbacks fan. I, I literally racked my brain about this earlier. I can't think, you know, usually like somebody in your childhood or something will just randomly be a fan of somebody. I can't I can't think of one Diamondbacks fan. A lot of that has to do with our geography. Obviously, in Chicago, there's probably not many fans outside of Chicago, uh, and in West Virginia, nobody's concerned about Arizona. So yeah, <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite with Arizona and uh, Illinois, the two states. It's like you have a ton of Cubs fans in Arizona because that's where the spring training was for you know all those years and. And a lot of Chicago people go to Arizona to retire. So you have a lot of Cubs fans in Arizona, but you don't have a lot of Diamondbacks in Illinois, obviously. <laughs> Hardly any. If, if I, I don't know anybody. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a total different end of the spectrum there as far as those two states go. But, yeah, so Diamondbacks fans, uh, we appreciate you guys checking in tonight with us and hope you enjoy this podcast of the, uh, of the Diamondbacks this year. They're in a tough spot. You know, they could go turn this thing around and start heading towards you know, being a really good team or they could turn it and go the other direction, but they're in a tough spot with the Dodgers and the Padres just living up top for a long time here. So yep. David, as always, man, I enjoyed it. Unless you got anything else, we'll wrap this one up and we'll head on to the giants and talk about that terrible team. So you got anything to add, buddy? Nope. Uh, let's get, let's buckle down, man. We're getting close. We're getting there, man. So please subscribe to our frenemies channel on YouTube. Click that button for us and, Give us some views. Uh, share this with your friends. Hopefully, you guys will talk about this. Uh, we try to be, you know, as unbiased as we can sometimes about these teams and try to give you some updates about your teams every every season. So we enjoy it and have a good night, everybody. Have a good night.